Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series on our channel where we'll be explaining the basics of sorting algorithms. My name is Steven, and over the next couple of months, I'll be taking you through the topic of sorting algorithms as they relate to computer science. We'll discuss what sorting algorithms are, how we score them, and then dive straight into 13 of the most common sorting algorithms commonly used by computer scientists. This series will not require you to have a super in-depth knowledge of computer science or data structures for that matter to fully comprehend. However, I would recommend watching our lectures on both of those topics if you wish to be more informed about the terminology and lingo associated with this series, as otherwise some of the information may be confusing. A lot of the knowledge taught in those lectures will come in handy as we work our way through this course, and so it's good to know if you plan on sticking it out throughout this full course. With that being said, let's go over the big question probably on your minds, and that is what exactly is a sorting algorithm? Well, to answer that question, we first need to talk about data. For the purposes of this series, data can be thought of as a collection of information stored in a similar location, such as an array or some other data structure. This will always be in the form of a numeric or alphanumeric values. For example, a list of patients at a hospital or a collection of high scores in a video game. Basically, any set of data that stores information through words or numbers. Now the big problem we need to solve with lists has to do with the two different states that they can be in, either sorted or unsorted. In a sorted list, the data is sorted by some particular order, whether that be numeric or alphanumeric. Every data point has a specific place within the list, and there is a natural order to things. On the contrary, in an unsorted list, the data is not in any particular order, meaning it is not in numeric or alphanumeric order. That is to say, the information is random, without any rhyme or reason to where in the list the certain data points are. On your screen now is an example of both a sorted list and an unsorted list. Now, the big problem with lists, and the problem that sorting algorithms solve, is that we want to find the fastest or most efficient way to get from one state of the list, unsorted, to a state in which it is sorted. This is the bread and butter of sorting algorithms, and over the next few lectures we'll be talking about numerous ways in which this can be accomplished. Thus, we can finally define a sorting algorithm as a function used to rearrange a given array or list of elements according to a comparison operator on those elements. This comparison operator will be what we use to place the elements in order, and will help us create our sorted list. Now the next question probably on your mind is why do we actually need to sort lists? What value is there in having a list which is sorted numerically or alphanumerically? Well, the answer to that is quite a lot. Having a sorted list allows you to gain a lot more from that data than you would be able to otherwise. The biggest example of this is the fact that once a list is sorted, you're able to search through it much, much faster. With an unsorted list, we have to use linear search to find an element within it. However, with a sorted list, you're able to sort through it using binary search, which is much more efficient. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the timestamp of our Introduction to Programming series where we talk about both of these searching algorithms in the description below. This comes in handy for companies and programmers every single day. Searching through password databases, patient identification for checking into a hospital, searching for possible paths to get to a location on Google Maps. The benefits of having a sorted list are unquantifiable, and so being able to implement sorting algorithms when needed is a huge bonus to any computer scientist. Another major benefit to having sorted lists is that we're able to draw a lot of useful information from that data extremely quickly. For example, we could find the median and mode of the list more easily, the kth largest element of a list in O of one time, construct a frequency distribution, etc, etc. The list goes on and on. By having a list be sorted in a numeric or alphanumeric way, we can use that natural order of the list, along with some programming tricks, to do things faster and more efficiently than we were able to do otherwise. 
Okay, so now that we know the what and why when it comes to sorting algorithms, we need to go over the how. Basically, up next we'll be going over the different types of sorting algorithms and the examples that go with each of those types. You may be wondering how there are different types of sorting algorithms when the goal of each of them is the same. Take an unsorted list and turn it into a sorted list. But depending on the type of data in that list, we can adjust the comparison operator to more efficiently sort the list. For example, if all the values in our data set are evenly spaced out, that is to say each one is naturally similar in the difference of values from the others, we can use that fact to sort the list faster than we could otherwise by implementing what is known as a counting sort. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I would also pay attention to this segment because this is the order that we will be going in for our series. So every sorting algorithm that you see will end up being talked about in depth on this channel in the coming months. The first type of sorting algorithms we're going to be talking about are comparison sorts. These algorithms will sort a set of data by continually comparing the elements near each other in the list and swapping if necessary. Doing this over and over and over again will result in a sorted list. We'll talk about a good number of comparison sorts, such as selection sort, odd even sort, bubble sort, cocktail shaker sort, quick sort, bitonic sort, heap sort, and cycle sort. Each of these, in some way, will compare the values within them until a sorted list is achieved. The next type of sorting algorithms that we'll cover are insertion sorts. These algorithms go through the list of elements and slowly build the sorted list one element at a time. They do this by finding the smallest non-sorted element within the list and placing it at the first location of the list. Then they repeat this process for every element in the set of data until it is sorted. The two insertion sorts that we'll talk about are insertion sort and shell sort. The last three algorithms we'll talk about are neither comparison or insertion sorts, but can still be useful in computer science. They are merge sort, bucket sort, and comb sort. Merge sort is a recursive sorting algorithm which breaks the list down into smaller and smaller parts and then slowly builds it back up to be sorted. Bucket sort is a counting sort which takes advantage of lists with similar deviations between elements to pre-sort lists of elements into buckets. And finally, comb sort is an exchange sort which repeatedly swaps pairs of items in a set of data. Now this all may seem like an overwhelming amount of information dispersed throughout these 13 algorithms, but we'll be taking things very slowly. For each algorithm, we'll talk about a general overview of that algorithm, dive into the actual math behind the algorithm, talk about where it might be useful in computer science, discuss its efficiency, and then take a look at a visualization of said algorithm working in the flesh. So don't get too worried if you feel a little bit overwhelmed right now. With all that being said, we're ready to tackle the topic of sorting algorithms as they relate to computer science. But before we do so, however, we need to talk about efficiency as it relates to these different algorithms. Each algorithm differs in how fast they can sort a list, and how much memory they require to do so. This is known as its space and time efficiency. So, because we're covering 13 different algorithms, we're going to use what's known as big O notation to judge these algorithms based on how effective they are as an actual algorithm. Doing this will help us differentiate between algorithms and decide which one to use on our list. So stay tuned for next week when we talk about that. And subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Thank you for watching.